Okay, quorum is there. <laughs> hey, good, good morning, good evening, everyone. Okay, so with my first um, like um, information, message, proposal, suggestion would be that we ha uh, we are going to have this uh, conversation or like this meeting every second day because and uh, uh, okay, maybe you're of different opinion, but that's okay. We can have this every day, but like uh, it would be, I think, more productive to uh, to notify each other every second day what is already done, what is going to be done, because otherwise, I think that the 24 hours is at least now not too. It's like too short period of time. And uh, otherwise, we waste a bit also our time just to listen very often to very specific detail-oriented discussions that may happen also in Slack. Uh, what's your opinion? Mm -hmm. I, agree. I agree with you completely. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's say that next uh, meeting will be on uh, Tuesday at the same time, but on Tuesday, not tomorrow on Monday and we let's do it for one week and we will see how it works for us uh, so on uh, Tuesday Thursday and let's say um, Sunday Saturday something like that at the weekend once and after one week we can do a kind of evaluation to figure out okay it works for us now for everyone or most for, for most of us or not and then let's return to everyday calls it's fine. I think it's a great idea anyway. Yeah, okay, good. Um, uh, still just a, a short uh, notification. I'm still talking with different persons like Janos, being a new member of our team. Welcome, Janos. Uh, just so, to, uh, to introduce them to the like, main concept uh, uh, of search engine data infrastructure that we have, the one single virtual machine, the whole environment, how we will work, uh, and how we want to implement a kind of Scrum, a kind of a, a Valve uh, methodology, and uh, slowly re-engaging them. Also for, by, by giving, for instance, them to access to the virtual machine to be, uh, so that they, uh, they will be also invited to our GitHub account to share their notebooks there things like that it's more organizational stuff i'm doing this one on one because i message every single person that uh, were in our that was in our uh, channel and there were plenty of persons being representative uh, representatives of other teams but a lot of uh, like uh, let's say uh, lone uh, wolves or persons just being uh, being uh, inscripted by at the same time not having any task or being uh, attached to any uh, team so yeah it's I, I think it's already five or six persons uh, it's you can find them on, on the roster with nlp uh, a lot of a lot of persons with nlp a background or data science background so yeah so i think it was a good idea just to let's say to refresh this list and to find people who who can contribute, who, who want to, to work, but actually just because the communication looks like it looks and it's quite difficult to like to have a general call, introduct, introduction call for everyone every day. So yeah. So yeah, Lucas, I, I have uh, an idea about that. Yeah. Can we actually concentrate? So look, usually we have a lot of questions uh, to discuss in our agenda. Can we concentrate on one question uh, of vision and implementation for now? Yeah, sure. Without discussing details, because I think vision is something uh, we have to uh, agree on and uh, it's very important. Yeah, sure. So go ahead if you have something to say that I presume you want to talk about. Yeah, so um, I think vision should be actually uh, well uh it's not like everybody's coming with ideas on vision but it should be agreed uh, by all people so before actually showing something uh and sharing something um in this channel we, we have to see and uh we have to work on a collaborative document describing vision so uh i think this is kind of starting point so first uh, if you have some ideas, just put it in common document, and I think Lu Lukas, you should uh, 
created and uh, after we, we can uh, discuss workflow because now it seems for me it's a bit a bit uh, kind of uh, abstract discussion like yesterday I saw something from uh, Imran uh, that well it's not clear to me and uh, I also don't quite understand uh, implementation things that uh, it seems something already started and it's not clear what which is fine if there is separate team is working on this and I can re really support this uh, uh, kind of things but uh, if they already have some results it makes no sense actually to duplicate their work this is my point yeah. so, uh, I would I would like to ask Imran just to explain uh, what you guys did with Kevin Lee and uh, probably there are some other people involved and what actually you want to achieve because for okay. me like, like yesterday you showed some something working or something that probably will work soon so, okay yeah um so regarding like that schematic that I shared before, um, I outlined three main activities uh, based off what all the discussion was. Um, let's, let's start with the first one. Like the first thing that kind of started this channel was using Elasticsearch plus semantic search, right? So um, Alex uh, brought up this really awesome article and he said, hey, I want to tackle this. So um, Alex will be loading those dense vectors uh, into Elasticsearch so now we could actually start using semantic search so that's kind of like mini product number one um, and then there's other stuff that's not strictly search engine but it's kind of needed for all the other parts which is metadata extraction um, the, one thing I noticed among what, what is metadata hmm? uh, extraction and how it's related to our task yeah so um, to clarify, metadata in this context means we have um, like specific information extracted from the papers themselves, right? So a good example is sample size. Um, a lot of people are asking for what are the sample sizes in the papers, right? Okay. Uh, sample size. Study design is another uh, metadata in terms of if people want to look at strictly simulation papers or strictly clinical studies, then they're able to kind of filter based off those metadata. So it, essentially it's like the filter that was proposed before. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and then the last... My, my comment, if you are thinking about metadata extraction, you should think about <laughs> standardization at this point of time. It, it's like a first metadata schema that should be filled and after mm -hmm. you do metadata extraction. Yeah, so the metadata schema, and Slava, I'll, I'll, I'll share it to the uh, channel as well. Um, I've been kind of kicking this document around, asking for everyone to fill in what they want to extract. Mm -hmm. um, task, I, I basically copied over task ties, their activities, but um, I'll send the channel and send it the channel and you could add in the other metadata that you want to extract yourself. Mm -hmm. And that way we could prioritize based on what everyone uh, wants in terms of common needs, like sample size, everyone needs. So that's like the first priority, right? Okay. Um, the other one, if I remember correctly, so there was semantic search, metadata extraction, and then there was knowledge graph. So um, maybe you guys could help me on this because I'm, this is like, I haven't encountered knowledge graphs before, but for example, for Jeremy's work, task VT, they both um, are looking to get knowledge graphs, right? Um, so I would ask the question, does anyone else need knowledge graphs? Mm -hmm. And uh, Lukas, you had the, uh, you had an idea of using knowledge graphs for, or using ontologies for sections, right? So that part, I, I just outlined that because Kevin just kind of like came in and said, hey, I could do that. And I was like, okay, he's, I guess he's doing it. But um, yeah, that but, part we could definitely discuss. Okay, because there's a huge amount of question marks here. Like, for instance, uh, you mentioned sections, and actually, it's a completely like it's a, just the start of the whole, let's say, 
pipeline a kind of because sections is just it refers to the fact that each uh, let's say item uh, in, in elastic search semantic search whatever each item represents just a section because we have uh, till now we have sentences and the whole docs the whole documents are so, so combination of all sentences here yeah, from one entire document mm. so to get for for instance it, any kind of a, a graph knowledge representation for sections first you need to create a, like sections data set so it's like once like you're here and somewhere in the, this high level part of the whole uh, let's say project and mm -hmm. actually the first thing you need is this low level thing namely v9 or v10 on section level so and uh, it, it was something. I mean, it's now it's getting very detailed. You see, it's, it's getting very detailed because it's not about vision. It, it's about implementation of a couple of different elements being maybe already somewhere in in our virtual uh -huh. machine. But yeah. then we need to talk to Jeremy because uh, my understanding was that actually there is a possibility to represent, the, let's say, like knowledge graph of the whole uh, of the whole section in this, this uh, with, the, with those different ontologies. But once yeah. again, it's something that we for sure we need to discuss with Jeremy. Uh, maybe not one-on-one, -on -one, but it's for sure, it's not the level of vision that uh, Slava wanted to discuss because it's a- Oh, yeah, yeah. It's I a agree, very, yeah. very specific, detail-oriented, uh, cross-domain uh, thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not just uh, to write a notebook because you you need to actually combine specific data with specific uh, like mm -hmm. enrichment uh, like those ontologies etc. So and, uh, just okay. just one small comment. It's not possible to get any knowledge graph from text because what you can get actually only notes. It's not a graph, and for graph you need relation. I hope it's well, clear. I, I thought so. From, I was doing some research on how they actually create the knowledge graphs, and um, there's sophisticated methods, but like the basic method would it just be combining ontology with a part of speech tagger? And yeah, then just. It's, it's not really a reliable knowledge graph. It's, it's kind of. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's like the basic one. Yeah. Uh, relation and uh, to be actually trusted knowledge graph, it should be also. Uh, uh, verified by human. So okay, yeah. So that's that's the detail about curation, right? Yeah, yeah. and it's not possible to avoid this step, unfortunately, hmm. because we are talking about NLP systems, which is by definition is not one hundred percent. You have disambiguation and you have other things to consider. Yeah. So it's and probably so good uh, good for experimental purposes. But mm -hmm. I don't think like serious uh, medical experts can can rely on this. Regarding, so that's the part I'm not sure. I like. Um, I'll try to Lukash. Maybe you could even contact uh, Kevin about exactly what is he planning on doing in terms of the relation extraction. Okay. Um, I know that there were a few. If you guys look at the schematic, there's a few items that were outlined for relation extraction. Indra was specifically for Jeremy, Jeremy's use case, but Spurt and SEMREP were some other good ones. And, Sem, and uh, Slava, to your point, SEMREP is a rule-based engine. Um, I think NCBI uses it as well. So that one might be a bit more trusted uh, compared to other statistical methods. Yeah, I mean, like Iman, because you mentioned three like points or three uh, tasks or sub-tasks. You yeah. so my, my proposal because I, I message already you on that would be yeah. just to take the first one with Kevin or, or Imri or Kiri. I, I, I misspelled the name probably. Uh, another guy, Kiri Kitty, Ki, I forgot. Oh, the yeah, yeah. Uh, so to take them and to start yeah. working on the first task, this one. Uh, and in the, with this valve, valve, valve methodology or something like that, mm -hmm. just contact uh, Yason or to get the, like the, the outline of, of this uh, methodology, and uh, okay. let's look how it works for you. Because uh, like for other teams, 
when I launch one group working on specific tasks this week, it will be great. But now I need like to onboard them. Uh, so, and you, you want already to do something. So let's maybe, uh, let's do, let's like to, like to, uh, to get a more or less uh, deliverable version of this first thing, uh, this first point you wanted to do, what was it? Uh, it's it's not elastic search, but what what was it? You mentioned the, the first. One. The Sorry? metadata extraction. Yeah, so metadata. First... Okay, yeah. So um, I think we could technically get started, but I would like to kind of uh, compile what everyone needs first um and then we because i know like there's a few clear items but as lava was also mentioning that i think we should uh, outline the schema of which metadata we want to do because then we can look at which metadata needs uh annotations right i just recently learned that papers also usually submit their uh like the experimental uh parameters to another re repo that we should also take a look at so before we just go ahead and start, like, for example, if we try to extract sample size via NLP, but it's actually in a repo, I would just like to do the initial research. Yeah, that, that's why I, I'm saying just take one focus on one thing. Yeah. Uh, like not, not BART, not something high level things, like this yeah. uh, metadata extraction, just uh, sit together in two or three groups, take the, this uh, Valve document from, from, from uh, Yason to look how it works. Actually, you, you, are, you are already with Kiri and Kevin, let's say one mini group, and let's focus on it, I like uh, just to, to prepare everything you need, uh, prepare this notebook doing this extraction, with all possible like caveats, like things that are uh, impossible also, and then prepare a documentation on that. And let's 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 say that you need a one week for it because let's be like realistic. It's not something you can achieve in forty eight hours. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like just and then at the end of the week we can see how how it works whether. Uh, this whole valve uh, makes the valve story makes sense to you uh, okay. all. and then yeah because uh, you see there's a lot of uh, like this high level things that actually depends on the low level things that's right and yeah. once we don't have a fixed uh, low level processes like v9 v10 v12 on uh, sections level etc etc then you mm -hmm. actually we can uh, talk about it endlessly without providing nothing, you know. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right, Lukash. Uh, I'll, go, I'll uh, definitely try the valve methodology. Yeah, yeah, if you, okay. If you could send me the uh, documentation yeah, yeah, just, that, because I've never heard of it. Okay, it's, yeah, it's, you will see, I mean, like, it's, it's just a simple thing. I mean, like, simple, but very productive in our environment, I think. Uh, and, um, sorry, uh, Lukash, I, I just wanted to ask, Slava, did, did, was I able to uh, help answer your question? Um, yeah, so um, what I think, it, it's great that you guys started to do something. This, this is really important and uh, I really like uh, that uh, you already initiated this process. And uh, also uh, what I like that probably, uh, you know, in, in this learning curve, you can fail uh, uh, faster a little bit so you can learn more after you yeah. come to a bigger group so yeah this is i think the uh, great way to learn things new things and to collaborate together okay great. Uh, please continue and just share with lucas what you will discover and uh, probably i uh, yeah we will see some interesting things that can be incorporated in kind of bigger picture it's like a research and development process and probably like 80% of uh, stuff that you're going to produce, it, it, will, it will be, well, like incremental, but 20% can be integrated in, in kind of a new package that can serve more purposes. Hmm. So I think it, it can, can be kind of natural uh, evolution process in this case. Okay, there are some other questions regarding uh, Anything as than uh, elastic search. Okay. 
So uh, I presume that okay, everything what have been answered uh, have become also uh, have been quest like have been asked have been also have become also answered. Never mind. Uh, so yeah, and ne so next meeting let's do it on on uh, Tuesday at the same time, the same place. But just uh, let's let's take forty eight hours to. Uh, to work on our things uh, because otherwise like uh, uh, too much redundancy information redundancy is also uh, can be like um, it's not necessary i think so okay uh, so let's uh, if any questions or, or or suggestions so let's uh, let's put it everything in in uh, in slack so uh, have a good uh, day good evening good morning whatever and we will hear uh, we will hear each other on slack or on tuesday okay thanks guys bye yeah, guys you're welcome ciao